Once the membrane is in position, use lengths of 33 by 33 mm multi-purpose baluster material as battens to form a shallow frame around the subframe. This will give an extra edge for the subsequent covering of P-shingle to rest against on a sloping site. Fix the battens using metal staples. On sloping sites, intermediate battens within the subframe area may also be required to prevent the movement of the P-shingle down the slope. Cover the whole area of the membrane with a 25mm minimum depth of P-shingle. This will allow excellent drainage under your deck and will help keep the membrane in position and cut out any UV light, which can deteriorate the membrane material. Newel posts can now be fixed into position. These posts will provide the support for our handrail system around the deck. We used 85 by 85mm multi-purpose post material. But of course, you may prefer to use either the 85 by 85 mm classic, colonial or contemporary newel posts and their associated handrail and spindle designs. Cut the newel posts to the required length, allowing for the depth of the subsequent top rails, bottom rails and balusters that will make up the railing system. When fitted, a maximum of 100 mm gap should be allowed between the top of your deck boards and the bottom edge of the base rail of your railing system. The bottoms of the newel posts are fixed in at least two directions to the beams, using either ledger lock screws or coach bolts to provide a solid fixing. Once fixed in position, check that the newel posts are level. On our deck design, extra joist material is fitted between the beams to provide support for this corner newel. Q-deck deck joists can now be fixed onto the beam structures using 100mm screws or 100mm high quality galvanised nails fixed at an angle down into the beams. The distance between each joist will be determined by the section of the deck boards you're using in your deck design. Wider, thicker deck boards can have wider joist spacing. Narrower, thinner deck boards will require closer joist spacing. Decking suppliers will give advice on joist spacing for their range of deck boards. Or you can refer to the joist spacing tables supplied within the document section of this CD. Continue to fix the subsequent joists across the beams. To maintain a consistent width between joists, a short piece of timber cut to size is a useful device. Once all the joists are fixed, noggins should now be fitted throughout the subframe. These are short pieces of joist material that are fixed between the joists to provide an extra rigidity to the whole of the subframe. Noggins can be fixed using screws or high quality galvanized nails. We have also positioned noggins around the magnolia shrub to create a mini frame that will provide support for the subsequent deck boards. Using screws, joists can now be fitted to the outer edges of the beams. These are known as rim joists. These will provide an outer edge support for our deck boards. Because our deck design incorporates an existing wall and steps, a ledger board will be used to act as an extra beam to fix the joists too. Ledger boards, cut from both 44 by 97 mm and 44 by 145 mm Q-deck joist material, are screw fixed to the wall and steps along their lengths. These boards should be packed away from the wall and steps by at least 10 mm, using either several washers around the screw fixing or galvanized bars. This allows adequate water drainage. If your deck is to be fixed directly to your house, a ledger board should be used and fixed in a similar way. However, ensure the ledger board fixing does not interfere with your damp proof course. The damp proof course of the dwelling should never be compromised or bridged, which is why you often see advice to install decks well below DPC level, particularly where DIY installation is involved. But by following the details and procedures shown on the illustration, decking can still be installed to be level with the existing patio or French doors. If your house is old, the finished height of the deck boards should ideally be at least two bricks courses below the damp proof course level. We can now fix extra joists from the main subframe to the ledger boards to create our small subframe in the step area. Joist hangers and corner brackets have been used to fix and support the joists to the ledger boards. Our subframe is now complete.